It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends and ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to jump on the gigantic Sharp Interactive Board. We're going to go through Canon's FY 2023. The numbers are in. Canon, you did a great job for your FY 2023. I do have some concerns. I'll share those here today. So without any further ado, let's jump on the gigantic Sharp Interactive Board, and I'll share the presentation I put together just for you. I wanted to come up with a poem. It's Valentine's Day. By the way, happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, top line revenue for Canon was $28 billion. They had an operating profit of $2.5 billion at 9%. Congratulations, Canon. These are strong numbers. Let's look at all the individual business units. The printing group, $15.7 billion in top line revenue. Operating profit of $1.5 billion, 9.7%. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Let's look at the medical group. $3.7 billion in top line revenue. Operating profit of $211.7 million, 5.7%. Still strong, right? Ladies and gentlemen, imaging, the camera business, $5.8 billion top line revenue. Operating profit of $975.6 million, 16.9% operating profit. I got to put the pen down and do a big clap for that one. Congratulations, Canon. Let's look at the industrial business. $2.1 in top line revenue, $393 million in operating profit, 18.6%. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, Canon had a $578.2 million loss in their others in corporate. And in Canon's case, it's irrelevant because they still delivered a 9% overall company operating profit at $2.5 billion. Congratulations, Canon. These are strong numbers. Let's look, look a little bit deeper into this printing business. The production business for Canon is $2.7 billion top line revenue for the year. It represents 18% of Canon print revenue, and it's 9.5% of all of Canon. The office group, which is office MFDs and others, is $6.6 billion. $6.6 billion. Their office MFD business is $4.2 billion of that $6.6 billion, and the others is $2.4 billion. If you look at the prosumer group, $6.4 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, the printing business unit is 56% of all of Canon's revenue. I do have a concern regarding the printing group over at Canon, and I've shared this before, and that is the big customer that Canon has, HP. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that Canon's revenues, about 15% of Canon's total revenues are coming from HP. And if that's changed, then Canon really should share that with the world. But but 15% of 28 billion is a whole lot of money. I mean, you know, HP's delivered four, four and a half billion dollars a year to, to Canon. And we saw HP's financials. Their last FY, they were down $10 billion in revenue. And, and that $10 billion decline in revenue wasn't all from the compute business. You know, you've seen the episodes here where I've shared HP, you know, hasn't had growth in print supplies for like quarter after quarter after quarter after quarter after quarter. And as the industry continues to consolidate and condense and be disrupted by digital transformation, you know, HP's numbers are going to drop and therefore Canon's numbers are going to drop. And it would be really nice to understand the profitability of the HP business to Canon the real revenues to Canon. Those would be great numbers to have, and I really would love to know those numbers. And it would also be fantastic to understand the profitability in each one of these buckets within the print group. What's the profitability of production? Everybody's so damn excited about this production print space, but at the end of the day, it's displacement growth. It's displacement growth, and, and, and people are printing less everywhere on every single print device in the world. It's called digital transformation causing a problem to the printed page. And sooner or later, our industry is not going to be able to sustain in the business model that was built for this industry decades ago. And we're still using that business model here today. It's getting pressured big time. And these OEMs are starting to realize the cost to deliver into the marketplace is getting too high. And, and folks, there's got to be some changes, but it'd be great to see some more details in these numbers. But overall, Canon, you know, you're doing a fantastic job. But I would just be really cautious having one customer represent 27% of the business group that does 56% of Canon's total revenue. Just some cautions there. Folks, laser printers, commercial printers, inkjet printers, multifunctional devices, it doesn't matter what it is that prints. 
It's going to print less tomorrow than it did today. HP's talking about their production. They're getting closer to what the customer wants, and those are all good things to talk about. Obviously, we want to bring products to the market that the customers want. But they do a great job in this production space. You know, there's no doubt that they'll be in the production space for the long haul. There's no doubt that Canon will probably consolidate up some other OEMs manufacturing. I can see it happening. And, and at the end of the day, in the MFD space, you know, Canon says they want to, overall, we plan sales expansion. I just ask, you know, expand in what way? You know, you're going to take from one OEM. That's the only way we're going to expand. The marketplace does not have a demand for the equipment. The demand for the equipment is less than it's ever been. The only way you're going to get growth is to take it from somebody else. Good news for Canon is they have the financial capabilities to get aggressive and take it from somebody else. Ladies and gentlemen, I was looking at some numbers regarding Canon. And it's kind of interesting to me, though. Canon has 180,775 employees. And if you do the math on that, at $28 billion in revenue, that's $155,000 per employee. Canon talks about how they're cutting costs, the cost of labor, and, and I believe that our industry has to have a consolidation of manufacturing. This has to happen. And I'm going to share some more numbers with you regarding the, the revenue per employee from some of these other OEMs. And you have to agree with me. We've got to have consolidation in manufacturing. You know? Let's start over here with HP. HP's revenues for their last year were $53.7 billion. Okay. They got 58,000 employees. They're generating $925,000 per employee. Why is that? Because HP doesn't make anything. <laughs> and, and HP sales force is, is, is small in comparison to these other players. But I believe it's because they don't have a manufacturing. Let's look at Conicum and Ulta. $7.6 billion in revenue. 39,000 employees, 192,000 per employee. Rico, 176,000 per employee. 14.3 billion in revenue, 81,000 employees. Toshiba, 3.4 billion. This is Toshiba Tech I'm talking about. 19,980 employees, 170,000 per employee. Nine Star, the PRC company that got banned over forced and slave labor. I got to say that every time I say Nine Star so people don't get confused. But ladies and gentlemen, you know, $2.8 billion in revenue. They got $122,000 per employee. I'm not sure if they count the, the slave labor in that number or not. I just wanted to say that. Canon, we already talked about them. Xerox, $6.9 billion. They did announce a 15% reduction, which would give them about 17,000 employees at that rate. But right now at the 20,000 employees, it's $345,000 per employee. That's a pretty strong number. Sharp. 46,000 employees, 13 billion in revenue. That's 368,000 per employee, strong numbers. We've got to have consolidation of manufacturing. This chart right here proves it. We've got to have consolidation of manufacturing and I believe Canon's in a good position to be one of those consolidators for sure. Let's look at some numbers here. I wanted to look at the asset to equity ratio. There's some interesting things on this page. Ladies and gentlemen, only 33% of Canon's assets are encumbered. They have a uh, total assets. I got a, I got something in the way of my board here, but total assets are $36.3 billion. Their liabilities are $12.1 billion. Their total equity is $24.2 billion. Their asset to equity ratio is 66.66%, meaning 33.3% of their assets are encumbered. That's pretty strong. They do have a big issue here, though. Ladies and gentlemen, 25%, 25% of Canon's assets are goodwill or intangible. $9.1 billion of their assets, of that $36.3 billion in assets, are intangible goodwill assets. We know that patents are intangible assets. But ladies and gentlemen, I really expect that Canon is going to have to have some kind of an impairment charge against these assets. It's just got to happen. And, and I don't, it's going to be a tough time when they do it. But I just believe their asset percentage is way, way too high. And, and you, when you compare with these other folks, you know, our friends at Rico, you know, 2.7 billion in goodwill, 18% of assets is too high. 
Our friends at Conica Minolta, 20% of assets are goodwill. It's way too high. So at the end of the day, I don't like this issue with Canon regarding their goodwill. Let's look at their, their cost of sales and selling and general expenses. Cost of sales for Canon is $14.8 billion. It's 53% of the revenue. Their selling expenses are 30%. The gross profit's 47%. So they're doing well. They got a lot of employees. They got a really high percentage of goodwill of their assets, but they do produce some operating profit. They do grow their sales revenues. Canon does a lot of things right, but at the end of the day, our industry is definitely in a disruption. And just because every, you do some, something right, doesn't mean you're gonna be able to maintain that without massive changes as we continue to consolidate. Just some things to think about. Congratulations, Canon, you had a great year. And everybody watching me knows this, status quo is the killer of all that'll be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo and I'll see y'all tomorrow.